First of all, we would like to thank our distinguished speakers um, and organizations who kindly agreed to share their reports about the current situation and its uh, ramifications with us today. I would like to um, start with um, Karen Karlaker. Um, Karen is the director of Penn's Free Expression at Risk programs. She focuses on global free expression, artistic freedom, press freedom, and digital rights issues and leads um, Penn's assistance to individuals at risk as a result of their expression. Dr. Karlaker has also worked as an editor at the Economist Intelligence Unit and as a consultant for Human Rights Watch and is currently a member of the Governing Council of the International Freedom of Expression Exchange Network. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Being with us. you want me to jump in? Um, sure. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, I'm honored to be part of this press conference today, which aims to draw attention to the deteriorating situation uh, for human rights and media freedom in Turkey. Over the past several years, and particularly since the attempted coup in July 2016, Penn has been drawing attention to the heightened threats to free expression in Turkey, uh, as well as advocating on behalf of individual writers and um, reporters and journalists at risk. In October, Pan America and 25 other organizations signed a joint letter condemning the state of emergency provisions in Turkey. Um, we've organized other sign-on letters or have taken part in sign-on letters on behalf of the Altan brothers and Mishmi Alpay. And this January, um, Pan International penned a message of solidarity with Turkey's writers, with signatories including several Nobel laureates, as well as the writers um, Margaret Atwood, Salman Rushdie, Jonathan Franzen, Ali Shafak, the artist Ivan Way, and an investigative journalist Khadija Ismail from Azerbaijan. Um, so we, we are constantly engaged on these issues and are particularly worried about the very severe crackdown in Turkey going on right now. Um, I'd like to point out though, Turkish authorities already had a disturbing track record of suppressing free expression and other forms of opposition. Um, so what we're seeing now is an intensification over the last six months, but it's a continuation of a trend that we've seen over the last um, a number of years. Um, as mentioned, um, since the failed coup, um, President Erdogan's government has declared a, a state of emergency, which has now been extended twice, and has passed laws sanctioning an even harsher crackdown on press freedom and free expression. These aggressive violations of protected freedoms go well beyond justified attempts to ensure national stability and bring coup plotters to justice. Erdogan's government is instead using the continued state of emergency as an excuse to further silence any and all critical voices in the country. Um, as noted already, um, according to the Committee to Protect Journalists, Turkey now has the highest number of prison journalists in the world um, for the first time, I believe, you know, since CPJ started keeping these records. Um, and this is far surpassing numbers, for example, by traditional violators such as China and Iran. Um, and over 107 news outlets have been shut down by the government as well. Um, the country is rated not be but free by Freedom House's 2016 report on freedom of the press. Um, due to use of the penal code and anti-terrorism laws to punish reporting, um, and also sort of the, the mass purges of critical of, of columnists by um, media outlets where there have been changes in ownership. Um, and, and, and as also mentioned, now we have at least 140 journalists now in prison, so it's, it's a very severe situation. Um, while some of these journalists have been accused of publishing what's called subliminal messages in support of the coup or being affiliated with terrorist organizations, many others are being detained without charge because authorities can't really find anything to charge them with, so they're really being detained. Um, there are credible reports of torture and ill-treatment of those in police custody. Um, and many other journalists have been forced to flee the country. Um, at least 50 have had their passports rescinded as well, so they're, they're stuck in the country. Or if they flee, they have had their passports taken away, so they're stuck in the country. They may be um, staying in at the moment. Um, family members of prosecuted journalists um, have also been facing <laughs> persecution, harassment, and travel bans as well. So many families are being separated by this um, situation as well. Um, among those journalists in prison was Asli Erdogan, a renowned novelist, human rights activist, columnist, and board member for the newspaper, Oswald Kingdom, whose case we've been working on um, since her attainment in September. Um, she was detained on August 16th, um, and she was also um, a number of other people involved in the, in the Oswald Kingdom case um, were, were kept in jail for several months, including Neshmi Alpe, whose case we've been working on. She's a very prominent translator. Um, we organized a letter, um, a sign-on letter, which over 1,500 translators around the world signed on her behalf in the fall as well. Um, 
Fortunately, they were released on December 29th um, at the beginning of their trial, which is now ongoing, but as, as noted already on the same day, it was sort of a bittersweet day, they were released from jail. Um, Amit was was arrested and, and is now in jail as well. So what happens is we have seen a few releases of some of the people whose trials have started, but that others are being put in jail. So the, the actual numbers overall have been increasing, I would say, over the last few months. Um, those subject to, to trial are um, you know, being called into court for regular court appearances. Um, their movements are being restricted. And they and obviously, they face travel bans, so they can't leave the country, um, <coughs> including um, Erdogan and Al-Fayed. Um, we've also been working on the cases of um, prominent writer Ahmed Altan and his brother, the academic um, Ahmed Altan, who have been also been incarcerated for, at this point, um, over five months. Um, I'd like to fill everyone in a little, a little bit from last week. Um, uh, Penn International last week uh, led a delegation of writers and publishers to Turkey in solidarity with their Turkish counterparts, who are now in prison and under threat. Um, they tried to visit um, Silivri Prison, which is where the, one of the main prisons where many of these writers are being held, um, and their delegation was restricted to a remote parking lot where they were surrounded by soldiers <laughs> with assault rifles. Um, who didn't really know what to do with them uh, because they, were, they didn't know that they were turning up. Um, needless to say, they, they were restricted from meeting any of the, the imprisoned writers and journalists who they were trying to, to see. Um, they did, um, in Istanbul, meet with some of the recently released writers, including um, Asli Erdogan and Neshmi Alpe, and others, including the spouses of writers who are still in prison. Um, one, of the, one of these um, wives, um, her comments were, it is not our husbands in prison, but journalism. She said, journalism is a prerequisite for a country to have a free press. If we don't have a free press, we can't be considered anything. Don't use the word journalist and terrorist together. It is very sad to see. Um, and and, a, and a, a sort of article by Joanne Lita Mackerman, who is the Penn International member, is coming out, I think, today in the Kristen Science Monitor talking about her trip. So this is, uh, this is from, her, from her article coming out today. Um, the delegation also visited an office of the new um, newspaper Democracy, which grew out of the former daily staff, of staff and um, readership of Oscar Gundam, um, which has also been shut by the government. Um, Democracy's various departments are working in separate locations in the belief that the more decentralized the operation, the better chance it has to survive. Um, just to close, in the name of defending democracy, President Erdogan has significantly undermined the <coughs> building blocks, free expression, and press freedom that are essential to its continued existence. Um, Turkish authorities must not use the state of emergency as an excuse to crack down on peaceful dissent. And we th believe that all journalists, writers, and academics in prison solely for exercising their right to free expression must be released immediately. Um, we're particularly worried um, in the light of the upcoming referendum. Um, Penn International noted last week that you know, a referendum taking place under conditions where there is no media freedom cannot be considered free or fair or legitimate either. So it's particularly concerning given the events and the planned plan referendum coming up in the next few months. So thank you. I'll stop it. Thank you.